Hey class, this is the lesson notes for chapter 6, lesson 1, Properties of Exponents. It's a big lesson. It's probably your biggest of the year. So you'll want to make sure you take your time as you go through this. You might want to pause after a few. Go take a little break and then come back and finish it. There are a lot of things to write down. So be ready. Alright, for our warm-up right now, I want you guys to go ahead and go compute these values. So all you need to do is go use a Desmos calculator or another calculator that allows you to do exponents. And I want you to fill in like 3 to the negative 2, 3 to the negative 1, 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, 3 to the second power. Do the same thing with the base of 2, and then do the with the base of 0 0.5. I will show these answers in 10 seconds. Alright, these are the values. You'll notice that everything that has a zero power to it has a one. That's unique. You'll also notice that whole numbers, as their exponents increase, their numbers get bigger. But when they are decimals and their numbers increase, it looks like the other numbers get smaller. You'll also notice that when it's a negative power, it's almost switching it. Like this goes from a fraction, which is one half to a whole number 2, this goes from a whole number to a one-half. This goes from a whole number to a one-third. You might also recognize that the 2 power here and the 2 power here have the same number, they just use a different form of a fraction. It's just inverted. Same with this one. 2 raised to the 2 is 4, 2 raised to the negative 2 is one-fourth. And technically 0 0.25 is one-fourth as well. So this is just one-fourth of, that's the invert of 4. Those might be things you notice. What do you wonder? Here are our learning targets for this unit. Um, again, we have a lot of learning targets. There's going to be a lot of different properties. There will be lots of examples of how to use them. It's important that you write them down and write some notes as we go along with them as well. So our first key concept is anything raised to the zero power is always equal to one. Anything to a negative power is a reciprocal, meaning that we change it from a whole number into the fraction of that same form or from a fraction into that whole number. So it goes both ways. So looking at these ones, again, trusting our rules and what we've seen, anything raised to the zero power, this is just one. This one here is raised to the negative four, which means the first thing we're going to do is change it to inverting the fraction, so we have negative 2 raised to the 4th, well, negative 2 to the 4th power is 1 over 16. You'll notice that this one, negative 2 to the 4th, is a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, because really this is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Because of that, every two negatives you have multiply into a positive. So these multiply positive, these multiply positive. So you really get 4 times 4 on the bottom, which is how I got to 16. Sometimes you will have these things uh, layered on top of each other. And oftentimes in math, we're going to ask you that you rewrite them only in a positive exponent form because that's considered uh, more simplified. So let's look at this one. First thing you could do with this is x to the 0 power. The 0 only applies to the x. It doesn't apply to everything on the top. So the first thing you would change this to is 4 times 1 over y to the negative third. To make that even simpler, 4 times 1 is just 4. So we have 4 over y to the negative third. Then we have a negative power, so we're going to invert it, meaning that this is now going to bring the y up top with the same power, just as a positive form. At this point, we can't do anything else to simplify this. It has positive exponents, and there is nothing else that has an x to the 0 with it. This is a lot of notes, and I need you to write down all of these things. I need to make sure you write down the title, the products of powers, the quotient of powers, and the power of powers. I want you to write down for sure these examples, so the numbers 
and the algebra, and for sure the words that go with it. Okay. So again, you should write down this entire section, this entire section, and this entire section. This might take a little bit, so you might want to just pause this video here and uh, start taking these notes. Power Product of powers simply looks like this, something where it's the same base with two different exponents being multiplied. You're actually going to add those together. Anytime you see a dividing symbol, a fraction, you're able to subtract them as long as they have the same base. Likewise, if you see a power to a power, so something raised to a power inside parentheses raised to another power, this is going to multiply. So let's get some practice with these. The first one here, remember, 3 to the 2nd times 3 to the 4th, this is going to become 3 to the 8th. If that's too fast, and you're like, I don't really know how you got there, remember that 3 squared is 3 times 3, because there's two of them. Then we have the times mark from the problem, and then 3 to the 6th is 6 threes being multiplied by each other. Because of this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's how we get to 8 of them. Likewise, with our fraction one, we're going to subtract these ones. So we are going to get 2, 4, to the negative 5th, which because that's a negative, we would need to rewrite that as... Oh, that gets messy. as 1 over negative 4 to the 5th power. Because negative 4 to the 5th power is not simplified, and you could put that into a calculator, make sure that when you put it in, you're putting parentheses around that negative 4 so you don't lose it. You'd actually get this whole thing is equal to 1 over negative 1024. Uh, we'll go back to this other problem as well as here. So let me rewrite this one. Um, this one is equal to 3 to the 8th. Again, use your calculator. Don't anticipate to know this off the top of your head. So it would be 6,561. Our last one says z to the 4th raised to the negative 3rd. So remember that because we have the power of power, this is going to just multiply those exponents. So we're going to get z to the negative 12th which then, because it's a negative, we're going to invert it, or use the reciprocal. So we're going to get 1 over z to the 12th. Because it's z and we don't know the value, we cannot actually solve it anymore. We can't simplify it anymore. If it was a number value, we could put it into a calculator. Again, some more key examples. Uh, so power of product property. If you raise something to a power, everything on the inside of this is raised to that power. Likewise, if you raise something to a power and it's already a fraction, you give that power to each piece, the stuff on the top on the numerator and the stuff on the bottom on the denominator. Again, please write all of this. Like we said at the beginning of the net lesson, these are going to be a lot of notes, so you just got to take it slow and maybe come back to it a little bit at a time. As we look at these ones, let's go through them. So this first one here, we would get negative 1.5 squared and y squared. This would become 2.25 times y squared. For our next one, we would have a to the third over negative 10 raised to the third, which just simplifies to a to the third over negative 1,000. For our next one, we have it all raised to the fourth power. So this becomes 3 halves raised to the fourth times d raised to the fourth, which would become 81 over 16, with that d to the fourth on top. 
our last one, letter D here. We have 2x to the third raised to the negative fifth, meaning that once we apply that negative 5 to both parts of it and we invert it, it would look like this. 3 to the fifth over 2x to the fifth. Once you apply that fifth power to all three pieces, you would get 243 over 32x to the fifth. Now you'll notice in these fractional ones we did not have to divide them anymore because 81 can't be divided by 16. 243 cannot be divided by uh, 32. If they could, we would have simplified those down even more. Now here are some more examples. We're going to use all of the rules together. These can get messy, but that's why I want to make sure we're including those for you guys so you see them in the notes. For our first one, negative 4 times negative 2 would be 8. Actually, let's break that down even more for you guys so you can see it. So we get the negative 4 times the negative 2 times x squared times x to the negative 2. So negative 4 times negative 2 would be 8. x squared times x to the negative 2, well, we're going to add those together, so we get x to the 0, which would then just be 1, so our final answer here is 8. For our next one, we have something raised to the negative 5th power. We just saw this on the last example. So we would invert it and make sure everything is raised to the 5th power. So we would have m to the 4th over 2. Oh, but one thing I messed up is on the inside there, there's already... Yep, so I'm just going to restart that one. So we see right away there is this w to the negative 3rd. So let's change that one around first. So we'd have on the inside of this... 2 over m to the 4th, w to the 3rd, all raised to the negative 5th. We apply the negative, so we invert this. So we get m to the 4th, w to the 3rd on the top of our fraction all over 2. This is now raised to the 5th power. Notice all we've done is gotten rid of that negative by inverting the fraction. Now we apply the 5th power to all three parts, so we'd be left with m to the 20th, w to the 15th, all over 32. The next one, we'd want to square this first, and then we'd be able to simplify this out. So this would become, initially, one forty four m to the fourth n to the six all over eight m to the fourth n to the seventh. Now as you're working through this, that looks like a big number, but again that's why you have calculators and can make use of them. You will notice that the m's are the same on top and bottom, so when you subtract them that will cancel out. Because four minus four is zero, anything to the zero power will be one, so that will cancel out. You'll also notice here that the, there are seven ends on the bottom, one, six ends on the top. This would get to negative one, which would make the end go on the bottom. So you're going to be left with just this one down here. This one would simplify down to 18 over n. Because again, these m's cancel out. 144 divided by 8 is 18. And n to the 6 over n to the 7th is going to leave you with one n on the bottom. Our last one here, again, you'd want to square that inner piece first and move the pieces around as you can. You will notice that there is a negative 7y here, so you want to move that up at the same time that you're squaring this. So you would get 9x to the 10th, y to the 10th, over 2x to the 4th, as we work this through, 9 divided by 2, we can't simplify that more, so we're going to leave that 9 divided by 2. 10 to the x to the 10th over x to the 4th would be x to the 6th left on top, because 10 minus 4 is 6, and then y to the 10th. Again, these are more complicated examples. You'll probably see them near the end of your notes. 
All right, now we're just going to talk through some things. So you don't necessarily need to write this down, but I do want you to think through this. So this one says, which of the following is the volume of the cylinder? If you don't know the volume of the cylinder equation, you guys live in 2021. Google it. So over here, we have the volu volume of the cylinder. Its volume is pi times radius squared times height. That's none of these examples. So let's figure out what they did. Our radius here is h divided by 2. So they substituted h divided by 2 into the r spot. They then applied the squared to both of these. So they have h squared and 2 squared. Well, now they have h squared times h is h to the third, and 2 squared is 4. They still have the pi in front, so the pi goes on top. So our correct one here is pi h to the third over 4. Just a way that you might see simplifying out there in more scientific problems. All right, another scientific problem is scientific notation. Remember, scientific notation is that thing where we have a number times 10 raised to a power. And we use this especially when we're talking about zooming and distance and light years and that type of stuff. So in this one, this is going to say how fast does something go each second. We know that the rate is they can shoot out this much in this much time. So we're saying this fast divided by this much. No different like miles per gallon. So they're just saying how fast can they shoot their stuff out across how much time. Once they get it to this spot here, they're just doing our simple dividing pieces because we have exponents. So 8 divided by negative 4 here, or 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the negative 4th. 8 minus negative 4 would be 10 to the 12th. And here we'd multiply this, so 1.25 divided by 6.25 is just 0 0.2. Like always, scientific notation doesn't have decimals, so you have to write it as a whole number, so then you'd move one of those powers of 10 over. Again, if you were to put this into a Desmos calculator, it would probably give you this answer right away at the bottom. It wouldn't mess around with the other things. But it's important to know how they get there. All right, today's homework. It's a big one. There's 40 problems. It's the most problems I've assigned yet. You're not assigned. It's not due on Tuesday. It's actually due on Thursday this week, so it's due a little bit later in the week. So that should give you a little bit more time to do it. Like always, you'll finish on big ideas. You'll screenshot it and then send it over to our Canvas page to get credit. If you need any help, let me know.